Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to read input into a Python program. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to convert that input into numbers, and then finally how to do some basic math uh, on the input itself. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. All right. So when you want to get input from a user, generally what you want to do is you want to go through two steps. Right. You for each piece of data that you want from the user, you want to prompt them and you know, tell them what you want or tell them what you're asking for. And then once you've done that, you want to read in their response, right? So it's kind of a two-step process, right? So um, the input function, which is what we're gonna use to get the input from the user, takes care of both of those things. Okay, the input function accepts an argument and its argument is a string which will then become our prompt. So what does that look like? Okay, well, use the input function. It's a built-in function. We don't have to import anything. And then um, as an argument, we can specify what the prompt should be, right? So maybe enter your name, okay? So right now, that of itself, this takes care of half of our problem. So let me show you what this looks like so far. Okay, so there's my prompt, enter your name, right? Matches the string for the input function. Right, so I enter Hank, okay, great. Now that's only half of it. We didn't actually store, we, we read that from the user, but we didn't store it anywhere, right? So how are we gonna store the user's response? Well, we're gonna need a variable to do that, right? So let's call that variable name, because why not, we're getting the name. And um, where are we gonna get that data from? Well, the input function returns it. Right, so the input function prompts the user, reads in the response, and then returns it as a string, which will then in turn store inside this variable name. Okay, and then once the information is inside that variable, I can turn around and send it to the print function, um, and display it right back on the screen. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so let's take a look at the code right now. Let's see how this program runs okay okay so on your name my name's hank and oops hit enter and program tells me right back you know sends me back the information that i just put in okay so that's how we can read input into our program it's just that easy now what if i wanted to read in numbers and store um, those numbers as numbers right the input function right now as it stands is only going to store or return whatever these are typed as a string and you can't add strings together right what if we wanted to be able to add ask the user for a couple numbers add them and then show them what the sum was well then we're going to need some more help here okay and so that help is going to take the form of one of two functions right so there's a couple of functions uh, there's function int and there's function float Okay, and these functions um, convert their arguments, which were passed as strings, right? So I should say they convert their string arguments, right? Uh, to either integers, um, that's in the case of the int function, or floating point numbers as is the case with the float function, if you use the float function, or the uh, float function. Okay, so, so we can combine int and, and uh, input to uh, get a number from the user and convert it to an integer, to a whole number, and store that in a variable. Or if we wanted to process floating point numbers, we could use the float function the same way. So let me just show you what, what I mean. Let's say that we wanted to add a couple of numbers together, okay? And Python supports the standard arithmetic operators, right? Operators, we've got addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. But in addition, we also have exponentiation and modulus, okay? All right, so let me show you how to use those operators. Um, right after we read in the values uh, from the user and uh, convert them to, say, integers, right? All right, so here we go. Um, we're gonna need a variable to store the first integer. 
So we'll call that num1. And we're going to need the variable to store the second. We'll call that num2. Okay, now where is num1 going to come from? Well, it's going to come from the input function. Okay, and we'll tell the user, we'll prompt the user uh, for num1. Okay, but remember the input function returns whatever the user types as a string. We need to store it as an integer so we can do some math on it. So we'll pass what input returns straight into the int function, right? So the output of input becomes the input of int, and the output of int will be the integer version of whatever the user typed, which we store in num1, okay? And then similarly, we'll do that for num2, okay? Of course, I'm gonna give them a different prompt because I'm asking for a different piece of information. Okay, now once that's finished, we'll have numbers inside of variables num1 and num2. So then let's find out what the sum is. Okay, so we'll assign to a new variable, to a third variable sum, the sum of num1 and num2. So as you can see, right, with this operator addition uh, operator, it works just like you would expect, you know, as it does in any other programming language, right? We have uh, each operand on either side of the operator and this holds true for um, subtraction, multiplication, division, modulus. So once this statement finishes executing, uh, some variable will contain num1 plus num2 in it, and we can print that out. All right, we can say the sum is uh, sum. Okay. So let's go ahead and test that. Okay. Well, enter my name. Hey. Still have that in there. Okay. So here we go. We're getting prompt for the first number. So 38. Okay, now we're going to prompt for the second number, um, 21. Okay, so 38 plus 21 is 59. That was computed with line 15. We printed out uh, on uh, line 17. Okay, so works great for integers. If we want to use floating point numbers, then you know, we'll do something similar, very similar. Okay, but instead, using the int function, let's use the float function. Right? Float function is for floating point numbers. Okay. All right, so let's run this thing again. My name's still Hank. Uh, and I'm one from the arithmetic for the integers. Your plus two is five. Okay, now here's the second set. Right now we're asking for floating point numbers. So 3.14 pi and 2.71 for the second number, okay? And we see that the answer correctly is 5.85, right? So these are typed in 3.14, 2.71. Those were read in as strings by the input function. Input function returned that, and we passed what input returned to the float function. The float function converted strings to floating point numbers, put them inside the number one variable, and the rest is history, okay? Um, all right, so let me show you uh, one last thing you're probably curious about, or maybe you're curious about the exponentiation function. So let me show you that really quick. Um, I'll just delete all the rest of the stuff to get it out of the way. Okay, so instead of finding the sum, let's do exponentiation. Right? So it works in a very similar way as the other operators, just two asterisks instead of one. Okay, so let's print the answer. Okay, so the answer is, okay. so this is gonna take, so num one here is gonna function as the base, num two is gonna be the exponent, okay? So let's run this. Okay, num one, let's do two cubed, okay? So two cubed is eight. 2 cubed is 8, so it works great. Really kind of cool that Python has exponentiation built in. Other languages like C++, for example, where you have to do pound to include the math directory, right? So you can get access to pow, or you'd have to do something like num1 times num2 times, or excuse me, num1 times num1 times num1 or something crazy like that. Okay, anyway, that's enough for this video. I've gone on long enough. Uh, 
in summary, what did I show you in this video? I showed you how to get input from the user through the keyboard, you know, through the console. I uh, showed you how to uh, prompt them, read that information, store their variable. Showed you how to convert their input uh, from a string to an integer or to a floating point number. And then finally, I showed you uh, basic arithmetic uh, operators. Okay, well, thanks for watching this video. And if you found it useful, would appreciate a thumbs up. Feel free to hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you later.